Five, four, three, two, one. Call to order the Mass County Board of Education meeting for July the 14th, 2022. Uh, first thing up is our vision. Ms. Brock, can you read our vision for us? Madison County Schools, in partnership with the community, strives to equip educators and students <clears throat> with the skills to lead by example, develop and speak with a unique voice, and explore their academic curiosity to make a positive impact on our community and world. Thank you. Next up is audience comments regarding agenda items. Do we have any? None? Okay, next is our consent agenda. These are items that the board sees on a regular, <coughs> regular basis and we're very familiar with. Items to be approved on the consent agenda are the minutes of the June 9th, 2022 meeting, claims, the record of superintendent personnel actions, the leaves of absence, declare technology surplus, acknowledge the review of the 2022 Madison County School procedure updates, procedure 08.2323 AP.1 and procedure 05.4 AP.1. Any questions? If not, can I have a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. I'll second. Second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Uh, next, we have our monthly reports. First up, we have Chief Academic Officer, Ms. Alicia Hunter. How are you? I am doing great. Um, I just wanted to give a quick um, report on our summer learning. Um, we've been busy. Um, it seems like summer is um, a kind of slow time, but we've been busy with um, lots of summer school opportunities. Um, so I reached out to a few of our principals. I try to give them um, some time where we don't bother them because principals need um, a little bit of a break too. But I reached out to a few of them and just asked, um, what did summer school, summer learning give you guys the opportunity to do this year? And um, of course I get flooded with all different kinds of things because, um, and, and how I can sum that up is summer learning provided opportunities for growth and opportunities for our students. And I'm sure you guys have seen all over Facebook all kinds of fun um, pictures and activities because not only did we need to um, try to give kind of a jump start with our learning and because we're still kind of closing those gaps. But it was also important when we um, talked to our teachers, our students, our parents to address some of those social emotional um, learning, social emotional needs. So I'm gonna show just a few things because summer school looked a little different at each level and at each school because we ask our principals to uh, be very intentional about targeted groups and programs. So I, I just have a few things I wanna share with you. So here's what we have. We had some very intentional small groups and our principal said that allowed for student growth. So students grew multiple levels on reading and math assessments because, because it was important for us to have um, some data at the beginning and then at the end so we could give that to our teachers when we come back in August to say here's what we achieved over the summer. And so many elementary principals told me that they had um, students growing um, on those assessments that they provided, but we had targeted small groups. Now at our middle schools, we had um, different opportunities. We had some who um, came in person and learned, and then we had some online opportunities for students to learn. And so our in-person um, opportunities look like this. And this is, these are just samplings from across. So math and reading, teamwork and community activities, um, yoga with alpacas. I mean, how fun does that sound? Maybe not for me, but for, you know? Um, history of Madison County, I mean, they just really had a very rich experience. They programmed robots, they had bucket drumming, frisbee golf, and all kinds of STEAM activities. And, and so if you think about what our needs were, and then we had wide opportunities for students to experience that. Then in our high school, because it looks different everywhere. You know, sometimes at high school, students need opportunities to just um, get those credits that they needed. But here's what we had. We had opportunities. Summer school this year allowed us to support those struggling students. But look at this last part too. 
and to offer opportunities for students to complete coursework to allow additional flexibility for taking classes at our Ignite South and dual credit um, courses because it's important you know to push forward so we needed to, to take care of that so that we can open up doors as we push forward into next year so I thought that was a great way to look at that growth and those opportunities for this upcoming school year so that's what we've accomplished um, with our summer learning program pretty exciting right mm -hmm. yeah. thank y'all thank you, thank you. Uh, Next, we have Mr. Tony Thomas of Clark Filter Summer Car for our construction report. Good evening, everyone. Uh, some hot days out there, and they're glad that they've been able to pay. So that's the one good thing that we have going on. At the, I'm sorry. He didn't have a catcher's mask on, so it must, so it must be okay. Pretty good. <laughs> We're like, and? Oh, and. and. <laughs> some good news, and we'll save the bad news for less. Okay. Um, so let's start at Clark Moore's. Lots going on there, just all over the place. Uh, the whole, they're, they're all over the building. Um, cooler freezer edition, the new windows, the cafeteria edition, the panel going around the top. And I think I mentioned that it, the, the piece that you see at the top, that's they're going to come and strip the roof. So that, that will be changed to match the color of the, the bronze panel there. That picture didn't turn out too good, but that's the concessions area. They're gonna. Uh, we talked this. We had a progress meeting this morning, um, and we talked about cleaning up the site, and um, that's one of the things they're gonna do and, get, and try to get some paving in. This is the band room addition, and they're putting some fill against the building there. Um, this is the front entry. If you've been by there lately, they've uh, done a lot of work along the front. You can see the columns coming up, um, and that's right where the front. They've got some new doors. There'll be a new security vestibule there, right when you go into where the office is. Um, just again, another shot. This is right outside the offices. New windows, new brick, new fascia panel. So it's it's looking really good. And there's a picture um, of the canopy colonnade that's going down through there, and they are moving on that. Um, this is a, another shot of the gymnasium and the new brickwork and the new fascia panel boards. Um, this is the inside of the library. Um, just a lot of work going on right there. That's the, that's the one place that's probably the furthest behind. Um, but they're in there. They're, they're, they're working as quick as they can to get stuff done. This is the band room. Really, they just need to clean up, put floor down, and put the ceiling tile in. I, the band room is just, just about ready to get, you know, there's two classroom and a band room addition back there. Um, and, of course, Madison County, you, know, you all have purchased the the TVs and the, the infrastructure to come in and, and re fit up all the old classrooms as well. So that work, I uh, spoke with Ben was at the meeting today, and uh, I believe most of that work, if if it's not done, it's almost done. Um, and just another view of where we got new uh, ceiling panels, new windows. Um, of course, that, that floor, the contractor's going to come back and clean all the floors. I walked the, the job site with the contractor today. Um, Cafeteria, just a few ceiling panels to put in and some floors to wax, and it, it, it will be done. And that's just a picture of the front one. It looks like when it's done. Um, the, the one bit of, I say bad news that we got today on there is the cooler freezer's been held up, and they have not been able to get the cooler freezer for the kitchen in. So the GC committed this morning. Uh, well, and he's already committed. He's, he's been talking to Mr. Clark and others um, about bringing in temporary refrigerators and, and freezers to the capacity of what Madison, Madison County would need until those cooler freezers get here. So they're, you know, they're coming to the table and, and providing the, the cooling. Uh, but, they, but that one piece won't be built in come August 17th. It's supposed to be the beginning of October. So we'll hopefully, hopefully get that in. But you will have a place, and uh, the new food service director was there today, and we walked through it and talked through it, and, and everybody seems okay. And if something comes up, uh, you know that we need to address differently. We'll we'll address it as it needs to be addressed. So there's a lot of work going on right there. Um, uh, it, today they said they'll be done. They'll be ready. The only thing there's some canopy piece on the front of that. You see those red pieces of canopy there. Those those are aluminum canopies. Um, everything will be there except those pieces, which doesn't stop you from going to school. But they're they're a few weeks behind the first of school, so. Um, the gym's done. I didn't have a picture of the gym. The gym looks fantastic. The new, the new wood floor in there and the color and shiny and new bleachers in there. Um, 
So they've really been pushing. There'll be new pavement by then, of course. Any questions about Clark Moores? So we're going to be done by the time school starts. Well, to be as honest as I can with you, cooler freezer. Except those two things you just said. Um, those, those pieces of canopy. I think the live, I think it's going to be tough for them to be in the library. Now, the GC is telling me that we're going to be done. We're going to be out of there. I think the library is, it's just so complex and so many pieces and where there's furniture that we have in there and electrical pieces. Um, but, of course, they, not that you want to start school without a library, but, I mean, they, they had portions of school during the renovation where they didn't, you know, where they didn't have their library. Um, but they'll have all their classroom spaces. Um, so I'm just being as honest as I can with you. They say they'll be ready by, by August 17th, of course, which is the first day of school. I drove by there the other day. It just looks like a total new school's been sit down. How about it's, that? Yeah. It just How looks about that? really nice. Yeah. And since school's been out, you've seen a lot change up the front of the building. It mm -hmm. really has. It's beginning to look more and more like the construction sign. <laughs> Anything else on Clark Moores? If not, we will uh, go to the dugouts. Of course, they took a break during the, the ball seasons and other things have been going on, and they've been struggling to get concrete. They have cast... Um, as you can see, the, the front piece of concrete out there, um, the contractor's given Dr. Gillum and I and Mr. Neely and others a report that he's ready to now put the roofs on and try to finish up the projects ASAP. Um, they look really good. It's just need to get the roofs on top of them. Now, those are just what you see there is the temporary roofs they put on for them while they were, um, while they were playing. Any questions about the dugouts and storage buildings? Um, activities building, uh, stopped by there a couple of times. I think I've been there four times this week. Um, but this is just a few hours ago. Uh, the contractor, of course, uh, last month we, we showed you where they just basically stripped topsoil. Uh, now they've stripped the topsoil, dug the ditches, put in some gravel, um, and they've put the uh, footer around the edge and put in the rebar. You can see it from different angles here. And that, that rebar is, I'm sorry, the, the concrete is still green, but I think it was only in for a couple hours after I was there. Um, as we looked at, there are a couple of places, we're going to go back, we'll talk to the special inspector and I've talked to Mr. Clark. Um, there's a couple of places that we're going to have them move the rebar and if they have to, they'll have to cut the rebar out. But we think when they get their forms in, the rebar is going to be too close to the surface of the concrete. So again, that's something we need to deal with. We'll talk to, talk to the contractor about it and they're just going to have to come to the table. And, and I, I spoke to the contractor when I left the job site as well, that these are the things that, that, that are going to have to happen. And he agreed that he would take care of those things. Um, but he's putting up the form work, should be done by Saturday. Then uh, Madison County's putting in some plumbing in that very corner right there because there's going to be two restrooms in uh, this particular facility. Then they'll come right back and cast the concrete so that uh, they can start construction of the building. Any questions on the activities building? Okay. Ignite North Campus. So that's not a very old picture at all. <laughs> Tammy was probably wondering, where's my construction report? <laughs> that's just a few, that picture is just a few hours old, but, um, you know, it's getting there. It's getting there. Um, and here, here's some, just some detail shots. Uh, the sod, they hadn't put the sod down around the building, um, but they have grass out and, and about the trees are going in, the, the grass is going in, and a good thing you see there in the lower corner is pavement. Areas and areas and areas of pavement. Um, I walked the site with the general contractor just a few hours ago, um, and he says that the last week of July, the top coat goes down, the striping goes down. They're in the process of, this is a picture from the lobby, they're in the process of, of cleaning every room, um, putting the ceiling tile in now that they've got air running, uh, cleaning the windows, and here's here's one of the shops that they've kind of worked their way out of. Um, that's the old mod, uh, shop, and you can see that had to peel back some. They've covered up all the terrazzo. They, they ground it, and it looked really good. And I thought I was going to get some p good pictures of it today, but thank goodness they covered. They've got it all covered up with some cardboard paper, which is really good. So I, I peeled some back here so that you could see just a, a detail of of the terrazzo. Uh, and again, they're putting now that they have air on, they're putting in ceiling tile and. That should just take a couple of days. See, you, here's the you can see the stuff on the uh, the floor there. 
uh, the acoustic panels on the wall to the right and the left, uh, the walls are painted, the frames are painted, the ceiling's going in, the light fixtures are in or on, really brightens it up in there. Um, so as they're coming out, they're working their way out of there and cleaning, and uh, they, as of, well, for the past few weeks and this afternoon, August 1st teachers can come in, August 17th students can come in. Um, and Dr. Gillum, I, I talked to him this morning, and he has tried to schedule the wood floor for August 4th. Um, so may, very well may have the, there was a little bit of question about because of the humidity in the building, being able to put the wood floor down in the gym, they're going to do everything they can so that the gym will be available as well. Um, uh, so here's an, still got some waxing to do on, on tile. Um, here's a typical classroom, the welding shop. Oh my gosh. It's, it's, it's something special. Um. And the restrooms, you can see there's the Linex flooring in there. It looks really good. Of course, again, it's dusty right now. At some point, it's going to be nice and shiny with the vanity counters and paintings up, mirrors up, lights are on. Um, and there's just a nice detailed shot um, to in the, the ATC. Um, I'm sorry. Ignite North Campus. Any questions on the Ignite North? So we're for August 1st. That's right. That's right. That doesn't mean on August 1st when the teachers are in there, that doesn't mean that contractors still won't be in there touching up paint or putting up ceiling. But that's just teachers. Right. Um, they may still be working in the gym. You know, they may still be working in, in the office area, something like that. But right now, kids are in the building August 17th. I just want to keep moving the goalpost. Yeah. Seems like every month but the date gets changed every month. We come yeah. In here, so. Yeah. 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 Well, what they've been working towards now is just not getting in the way of yeah. school starting at Ignite North. I think it looks Any, it looks oh, it does. It looks it's really. It looks good. I just want to make sure they can get in there. Yes, yes. Well, that's why I walked. I walked the, with the GCs twice this week. Um, Wish I had better news at the South Campus, CTC. Although a lot of, th I mean, it's, it's, there's a lot of things that are nearly complete and there's some, there's some good pictures and good details. Um, it's, it's come along as well. These are just some, some of the nicer, better pictures of different areas. There's the lobby with the gymnasium and paving going down there too. So they've got, they're going to be done with the base course within a matter of a, a couple of days. So be able to access the site. The terrazzo, they didn't didn't have that covered, but they, they were still working on some of it. But again, the terrazzo looks really good. We're getting to the point where it's finished. Um, the pro, here's a, a, a typical classroom. Here's the front area, front lobby area. You can see it's not quite as far picture? ahead as the, I'm sorry? How old was that picture? That's this morning. It's a lot of work to go there. Yeah. Uh, the culinary lab, talked with Ms. Newman, she's really happy about that. Um, again, another shot of the Line X floor in there. I think that's going to be a good product for you all. Um, lights aren't on yet, um, but of course they've painted and there's the acoustical panel. There's a good shot of the, the, the welding lab. Again, they're trying to, you know, get the floors done, clean them up, um, and, and get out of those spaces as well so that equipment can come in. Just a more, another detailed shot of the welding areas. Shot of the outside with the storage and the back lab areas, concrete in. That area wasn't paved, but they were, it's probably paved now. That was this morning, but they, they were working that way with asphalt. And that's just another detailed shot of some of the areas that are finished. So we've met with the contract, of course we've met with the contractor several times, um, but we met Tuesday and of course Dr. Gillum and everybody was there and talked about um, just where are we? And their problem is air conditioning um, because they can't get the parts to run their system to get the air conditioning going. But that's not your all's fault. That's not ever our fault. They, they understand it's their fault. And what it is is that their subcontractor did not order parts. And I think I mentioned this at a, at a previous, well, when I mentioned it at a previous uh, board meeting, they found out there was additional items that had been. We found out that there's been additional items not ordered by the subcontractor since that time. 
Now, y'all hadn't paid for them, and we, we just assumed they were ordered and they were going to arrive. Um, so we found out about that a couple of weeks ago. Um, so they're saying that air is not, even if they get close to making this building occupiable, the air's not on until the 15th. They can't get all their systems up and running and in place for air conditioning until the 15th, which you can't, you know, they're not going to be ready. You can't put ceiling tiles in. You can't finish up your, some of your, you can't wax the floors, you know, without air conditioning going. Um, so, of course, Mr. Clark and Mr. Gillum has been involved, and as I understand it, they're anticipating a plan B for the students that were expected to be there come August 17th. Um, you know, and I, I've walked with the general contractor. They, they understand. I believe he's had conversation with board members, and, you know, they understand. We may not understand that the importance of getting this done, but it's not been getting done. <laughs> So Isn't we're all very frustrated. Contract? With it. I mean, if you don't do your job, we don't get the project finished. There are, there are, there are things in, in, in the contract. The, the contracts are always made with you know liquidated damages for not achieving a certain goal. So what is our plan B? Yeah. I'm, I'm not really Mr. familiar. Mr. Do you know, Dr. Gillum? Well, at the um, at uh, Ignite South, those teachers uh, we have about four or five of them that are currently at Madison Southern, mm -hmm. so they will just remain there in the classrooms that they've had previous. Um, administration had planned to rearrange some rooms and, and do a few things in some of those areas. <coughs> they just have to delay those plans um, till a little later in the year in order to do it. Uh, we have added three programs uh, to that, so we'll just find a place at Madison Southern for them to double up for the, for the first few weeks of school. Uh, yeah. Looking at, you know, it's nothing we haven't done before. Uh, mm -hmm. Certainly not a position we want to be in. But, right, uh, right. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm rem I see Dr. Hunter back there, I'm reminiscing in Farristown, you know, we housed, we housed that school for the entire first year, uh, or first, uh, first half of the year. Right so, there, yeah, Foley and uh, Southern, that's right. Like, we weren't even dealing with, back then we weren't even dealing with the supply issues, that we, right. supply chain issues we're dealing right. with now. So, uh, but, right. Um, right. but the way it looks, as soon as the air is on, it, yeah, it, it, as you see the pictures that Tony has, um, you see our lab spaces, they're ready to go for the most part. I mean, you know, a little bit of uh, going there with a push broom and a couple hours of work and, and you can have kids in there. Mm. The issue is the finishes, like the front part, where we saw the lobby area, mm -hmm. there's a lot of casework that goes in, in that area that mm -hmm. you saw that's not finished yet. Mm -hmm. Well, the casework can't go in. Some of that casework can't go in until you can, until you're, there's air conditioning, so you can control the humidity so right. the stuff doesn't, right. doesn't uh, bow and swag and, and damage itself. So, uh, so that's where we are. Right. Right. I'm, they, they were telling us, and I'm, I do believe that uh, they were, what they said, uh, they said they need two weeks, uh, and they can do it maybe in six or seven days, but really two, maybe three weeks uh, to do all of the, to get it ready once they get uh, what they refer to as controlled air. Mm -hmm. They're able to close the windows and run the air conditioning. Mm -hmm. So that said, uh, the one uh, lady that's now working with the, uh, with the subcontractor on the mechanical, mm -hmm. uh, they, um, she is relatively new to that job. Mm -hmm. uh, they sent a new person down because mm -hmm. of the issues we've had. Mm -hmm. And looking at that, it um, uh, she was able to provide good solid dates and good good solid uh, shipping dates and pieces on all of the parts. I do believe, uh, barring some unforeseen mm -hmm. issue, mm -hmm. controlled air will go in on on uh, August the fifteenth, and then they need a couple weeks to. Uh, Get it all ready for kids. So they were saying they felt good about um, uh, September first, mm -hmm. and, uh, and we said we, you know, we're going to make plans to hold kids a little longer than that, just because. But uh, right. but I'm, right. I feel that we're dealing with a few weeks. Uh, right. And that will not be the most you know comfortable piece because it's going to be a little disruptive because we're going to have folks in classrooms they had planned on being. You know we're going to have. We're going to have uh, you know, a welding teacher teaching a welding class out of a regular classroom as opposed to the, the nice new lab that we have for them. But in a few weeks, we'll, that will, should come around. So, 
Yeah. Well, it's it's not our first rodeo with this. Just like you said, we we've, we've dealt with this practically on all of our remodeling and new school projects, at least since I've been on the board. And um, the most important part is we have a plan B, and the kids can keep on learning. And it always amazes me when you see this big construction, and I think that's going to take weeks and weeks and weeks. Mm -hmm. And I know once they get the air in, they will be in there, and they will have it done in no time. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. I, I feel very confident in that. Yeah. So sounds like a solid plan B. Yeah. And we'll deal with contractual issues. Right. Right. And I agree, I agree with Dr. Gillum that the new person, Amanda, has come on and really helped that subcontractor pull stuff together, organize stuff, and get stuff done. And another reason I bring that up, because she's a Madison County person with kids in the classrooms here. So that, that kind of makes you proud that you know, somebody comes in from Madison County. The frustrating part is that there's one contractor, one person ordering parts that has blew apart this whole schedule. And I think it's it's not the it's not the GC. It's just this one contractor that has completely dropped the ball on two complete projects, and it's not just affecting the general contract. It's affecting our kids, mm -hmm. our teachers, to get back to school. And that's that's what we've been harping about this whole time. And you know, the last time I'd heard was the first week of July. Mm -hmm. We'll be good to go. First week of July came and went. So then I started asking questions, and it was August 1st and August 15th. That's a long ways from first week of July. Right. right. So yeah. I, I think it's just very frustrating that one person can have such a domino effect right. on these projects. Right. And I feel bad because those dates are probably I reported to you. I think on the agency <clears throat> I even reported earlier. And then it's subsequent meetings when we find out that the things that we understood to be in, in on order and going to be on time were not even ordered. And I, we didn't find that out till after as much as six weeks ago. And, it's, and that's not a supply chain issue. No, no that's poor. That's lack, lack poor management. That's poor management. Issue. Poor management. Yeah, this has nothing to do with supply chain. And poor communication because we sit right here in this room. I don't know how many times because we were having our meetings here and now we're having them on site. But at the end of the meeting, does anybody have any problems? Is there any issue? Is there any shop drawing issues? Is there any color selection issues? Is there any material issues? Crickets. So, but there, so here we are. Um, and that, I believe, is the last of the... I hope that's the last time we have new dates. <clears throat> Me too. Yes. Me too. Me too. Any other questions? Of course, we're working on the um, middle school plans and uh, certainly home to bring those to you probably at the September meeting for final plan approval and out the door. Um, and that's it for the construction report. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh -huh. All right. Thank you, Tony. Appreciate it. <laughs> yes. Next up is our action agenda. Uh, first few things I think Mr. Woods can be talking on. First thing is 6A, which is to approve our monthly financial reports. Good evening. All right. Get my things situated here. All right. <laughs> Being right-handed, it's a little difficult, so. Um, as of June 30th, the district ended with a reconciled balance of $57,343,123.18. <clears throat> you can see that's down from this time last year. We've talked about it. Tony's just spoke about it. We have all these construction projects, so we're spending out funds there. Um, if you do notice, the general fund balance looks a little up as compared to last year, but we talked about that last time that... Um, we had a little over $2 million that the state took from us out of our general fund and they moved it. It would have been in special revenue last year um, because they reduced our SEEK funding and gave it to us through ESSER funding. Um, so that makes up a, a chunk of that while we look up this time. We also um, talked about last time we have some funds that need to be moved over to construction. We will be doing that in our year-end processes. All of these numbers are very preliminary, so um, we're still making adjustments and getting ready for closeout. We have to do our first preliminary closeout to the state by July 25th, 
So we're working on that, making all the final uh, numbers jive out and get them all separated out and do all the final entries we need to make. So um, these are very preliminary numbers at this point. Of the reconciled balance, the district has $5,740,000 $990.65 in investments. Those rates range from 0.15 to 0.55. Um, I've recently been in discussion with uh, one of our uh, local banks and I'm in the process of scheduling meetings with them to talk about moving some of these CDs to them as they mature. Uh, the rates that uh, were quoted to me are substantially like 2% higher than what we have. So I will be having those meetings and be looking at that, um, be trying to get us the best rate possible for any of our investments and uh, be looking out for that. And if we do so, we will get those changed and make a move that's right for the district. Again, it is with another one of our local banks. So um, we do try to keep that money invested with our local banks. Uh, also in your report, you had the balance sheet and revenue expense for June 30th. Like I said, these are very preliminary numbers. Uh, a lot of raw data in there. Um, it is balanced. It is all of that. But we still have a lot of year-end entries that uh, have to be done. Um, unlike each month, we, there are a lot of things that hit at year-end. And a lot of it's reports that we have to pull from KDE. So they finalize on their end. Then which takes some time after June 30th, and then we get those, and then we have to make adjustments throughout our books um, um, based on things that they've sent us and have to be reported. So any questions on the financials? Questions? Uh, if there's no questions, can I have a motion to approve the monthly financial reports as presented? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock, second by Ms. Cobb. All those mm -hmm. in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next up is 6B, which is to approve the ESSER spending plan. All right. So, um, if you remember, it's about this time last year we did our first initial ESSER spending plan. Um, and this looks a little different than it because uh, since then, I think it was back in March, we had another update on our expenditures, and I started breaking it out into the categories that. Um, the feds will be expecting us to report on our expenditures. Um, they, they've went back and forth. Uh, there are items that they once said would be this category, that category. So we're, this is, has to be a very fluid budget. Uh, we make changes as they come and as we get more information because um, the feds will actually say um, this is allowable. So. All the districts, okay, okay, we can spend on that. Well, this is a reimbursement grant. We do not get the money up front. None of the money comes in up front. So we'll spend on that, um, thinking that it's allowable in one category. They may come back and say, no, now it's not. Um, and we do some shifting around. We find some things that are allowable that we have at that point that we've already paid for out of general fund. We move those into ESSER. We move what they said, no, now we don't think you can. This has been a very, very um, trying, I guess is the best way to say it, uh, pot of money because um, it was kind of given to all the districts that here's you a pot of money, spend it, and it's a learn as you go process. So what I've done here, I've taken the budget, um, I've tailored it a little bit. All of this is as of where we stand at June. The next time we talk about this, I already know there will be a few changes to the budget because they have added a fourth category. And um, we do have some items that it's basically a small split from the meeting students, academic, social, and emotional. And they've brought that out and they uh, set up a little section called um, mental health support for students and staff. Well, we have some functions that we are paying for that qualified in the big category we have now but that are actually going to be moved over because with the new category and the new um, definitions they've given us, they'll fall in that category. So we'll move some of those items and a few initiatives that we've decided that um, would be good for our students going into the next year. So uh, we will be coding those there and I'll change the budget and report that to you when we get to that point. 
Like I said, this is as of June 30th where we are. So I took our overall CARES and ESSER budget, broke it down into three categories that we have. You can see it there. Um, just to quickly point out, the operational continuity section and other uses um, looks large, but <laughs> to me, it doesn't make sense. But um, Chromebook purchases did not fall into the academic need. It's not the where they define them um, for this. They said that if we spend on Chromebooks and devices for students to learn with, they fell under other uses. So that actually inflated that category and it's actually being spent on children. It's being spent on devices so kids can learn. But for some reason wasn't an academic need in their definition. I, I didn't understand that. Do they have a percentage that you're supposed, that you need to meet in each of these categories or to exceed or to at least? Not in the, these particular categories, but what they did have with different sections of the money is they had um, a 20% that was mandated to be spent on uh, direct learning mm -hmm. type items. We've more than met that. Um, we were actually, we were about 55 to 60% is what we were spending on direct learning activities. Mm -hmm. So that was their only requirement and, and we met those. And we do have to report on that in the federal reporting. Okay. So is 22-23 the second year of this program? Because it's a three year program, correct? <laughs> It is, but one pot of money went back to um, February of 20. So that was the, uh, yeah, February of 20, I always have said. So the 2021 caught a big section of this money. So we're kind of in the two to two and a half year range, um, depending on which pot of money we're on. So we still got um, another, the school year we're starting, another school year, and then part of the next for these funds. So with that, we'll see if I can. Oh. All right. So this falls in line with what I reported last time. Um, still keeping it in the three categories. You can see our total budget there is that total block. And you can see where we spent through June in each of the sections. Again, the meeting student academic needs, social, emotional, and other needs, that's the big green section. That's where we're spending. We are spending on students, and that's our goal with this money. That's what the intention of the money was, was to spend the money on students and to try and get them over um, the effects of the pandemic. The red there, that's addressing physical health and safety of students. So um, still, again, on students, but we're meeting there their needs. Um, in this budget and everything we've got, uh, we are continuing the additional nursing time in each school, so that will filter through the rest of uh, the years of this budget. Uh, so I did want to mention that that has been, you know, something we've focused on and making sure that we we have our schools adequately staffed during this pandemic, so that. Um, the nursing staff can help take care of all of our needs and keep our kids in school and learning. Break it down just a little bit more so you can see kind of where we're at, um, all of our expenditures through June. A again, um, we, we spent almost 70% of the funds we spent at this point um, on the kids' academic needs and, and their social emotional needs. break it down just a little bit further. So what does that really, what does that really mean in this? And um, so these are the general categories that if you take um, that big section, almost 70% of what we spent, this is kind of where it breaks down where we're spending the money. Um, one of the items I want to point out there, you see where it says student and teacher supplies. We've got money in the budget and we're doing it again this year. We are providing funds for the schools to be able to buy some of those extra items that we normally have on our school lists that go out. We're doing that again because we want to help families out. We don't want to put a burden on them right now. So uh, we're doing that again. We've made sure there's money in this budget 
to uh, help take care of that and take some of that strain off of our families so they don't have to be concerned with those additional extra items. Um, intervention services, that, that's a big piece of this pie. Um, we want to make sure we keep doing that. Um, virtual school up till now, that's what we've, it's taken a big piece of that, and then summer school. So, um, you know, we've done two summers so far. So that, that pie keeps increasing as we do summer school. Any questions? It's kind of a highlight of where we're at, where we're going, hopefully, <laughs> with all of this. Uh, we have a plan to keep spending the funds and make sure that um, we are meeting the needs of our students. And just to clarify, this is reimbursement, so we have to spend the money first. We have to spend and the money and absolutely. We have to spend the money first. We have to float the money. By the time we spend it, um, you're about, when we get all of our numbers, you're about two weeks into the next month. We send that to the state and we're, if we're lucky, we get reimbursement. So you're two months out. So you spend about two months before you get one month in. So you're in the third month of spending before you get the first month's money back. So that's one of the things that my department watches. That's, that's actually my main function, one of the things I focus on a lot is watching cash flow, making sure that we have, and you know, it's not just this pot of money. Title I is another one of our funds that's that way. Um, IDEA for special needs is that way. All of our, um, pretty much anything in our fund too, is a, we spend it first and then we have to ask the state for it. So you're you're spending two months before you get the first, two full months, and you're into the third before you get the first month's reimbursement. You're welcome. Any, any other questions? All right, can I have a motion to approve the ESSER spending plan as presented? So moved. Motion by Ms. Cobb. I'll second. Second by Ms. Brock. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Next up is 6C, is to approve the school fees. All right. This, these are the fees that each school asks and requests for. Um, you know, according to our, our board policy, um, they stay in place until they're either removed um, or changed. The only proposed change in this, actually, uh, I've sent it out to all the schools. I've had them respond back to me. Um, all the principals look through them. The only change that um, we had requested in these came from Silver Creek and you would have noticed that in your copy. I tried to highlight them. They would like to remove three of their fees and then one of them, I show it as a remove, but really they're wanting to rename that one. So I showed it as a remove and add um, and they're wanting to add, um, change the violin club basically to a guitar club. Um, they no longer have a person that plays violin that can teach the, you know, work with these students, but they do have a staff member that does guitar and they're willing to continue on um, to teach these kids how to play guitar. So that, that is the only requested change in the school fees. And I will remind the board, um, fees for free are waived for free and reduced lunch students, so. That's right. Any questions? Can I have a motion to approve the school fees as presented? So moved. Motion by Ms. Cool. I'll second. Second by Ms. Brock. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Next up is 6D, which is to approve the second reading of the 2022 policy updates. Thank you. I think this is just a... Yeah, these are the updates that come to us from uh, Kentucky School Board Association. Uh, pertinent to changes in uh, statute. Uh, so. Any questions? All right, can I have a motion to approve the second reading of the Madison County Schools Policy 2022 updates? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. I'll second. Second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Next up is 6E, which is to approve the first reading of revised policies 03.11, 03.21, and 
and 09.121. Anything you want to add, Dr. Gillum, on these? Well, these are uh, changes to policy that we made that we're recommending outside of those uh, KSBA pieces. The uh, three point, uh, my screen just flipped on me here so I can't, uh, I can't see those numbers. Uh, the, uh, um, the, the, the first two, the three point whatever and three point whatever else, uh, those two are dealing with the, uh, with hiring. It's just dealing with posting. We just cleaned that up a little bit. Uh, it, we had a thing in there that said we would post individually at each school. People go online and look at that. They don't actually look at the posting. There's still a statutory requirement that we post, or not a statutory, but a uh, regulatory um, um, uh, requirement that we post in the district, so we will post just on um, just here at central office. We will physically post. The rest of it's online. Uh, the uh, nine point one two one is dealing with the uh, entrance age there uh, for um, uh, for folks going into kindergarten, and we just set a, uh, a date there for um, for the. Uh, screenings to take place for those con requesting early entrance. Outside of that, everything, it's just a, a minor little change there. So, just to make sure that that is clean and clear. Anyone have any questions? If not, can I have a motion to approve the first reading of revised policies 03.11, 03.21, and 09.121? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cole. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up is 6F, which is to approve the district funding assurances. And this is our routine uh, approval of district funding assurances. Ke uh, the Kentucky Department of Education sends us a list of things that basically have all of the laws, all the regulations, all of the federal requirements in that one document there. As you can see, it's about 60 pages or so that's attached. Those are just all the things we're compelled uh, com that we are compelled to do in order to receive state and or federal funding. So uh, we just simply acknowledge we know those things exist. We're going to abide by the law. So, any questions? Can I have a motion to approve the assurances listed in the Kentucky Department of Education District Funding Assurances document as presented? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up is 6G, which is to approve the furniture purchase for Clark Moore's Middle School. And that one is, as you can see, we've done purchasing of furniture at Clark Moore's in three phases. Uh, this should be the third and final phase of that piece. So, you want to have any questions or anything on this? Is this our last purchase for furniture? It will be our last big purchase. Okay. Yeah, we may have a few little incidental items, but I think this is the last one that will come to the board. Take care of the motion. Yeah. All right, can I have a motion to approve the furniture purchase from Action Business Suppliers for Clark Moore's Middle School in the amount of $47,619? So moved. All right, motion by Ms. Cole, second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, next up is 6-8, which is to approve a Boyd Cat purchase order. Yes, Mr. we are asking to uh, get the approval. We looked at four different ones. Uh, the one that was the highest price, we kicked it out. The bottom one couldn't tell us when it would be in within the next year. The two we looked at could, uh, when we, if we were to get approved, we could have them in two or three months. We would use it on a daily basis. Um, and another thing right now, it is very hard if you need equipment to rent equipment, and it's very expensive. So. If you look back in the long run, a lot of times we have to go rent to be able to do this. So this would give us the capacity to be able, right now, the one we have is being used for mulch. So if we need to do anything else, we don't have the capability to do that. This would allow us to do that. We could use it year round. We use it daily for like, uh, like right now, we're getting ready to move a lot of things from Kentucky Tech to the new Ignite centers. We could use it for that. We use it for being able to help with projects that are going on. Uh, to be able to do that, we use it for snow removal, for salt. Uh, so it'd be something that we could use a lot during that. So we're asking for approval to, for the track loader. And and this is basically what everybody knows is a skid steer. Yes, right. So. Yep. it's called a skid steer. Yes, sir. So we already have one. 
We, yeah, yeah, we have one. It's older and it's very difficult to maneuver it. Like the other day, we were doing mulch and the track came off uh, three different times, so it put us back about three or four hours. Uh, so this one would be a little lighter. Uh, it's got more uh, capability to lift more poundage that we could use for that also. So, yep, we're looking to be able to update that. And like I said, renting it right now is very expensive. And then the other thing on top of that is uh, you are waiting. We tried to get, uh, somebody was getting ready to paint today, tried to get a lift, and there's no lift. There's no lift in town. There's no lift in Lexington. So it could put that project behind us. So we'll be able to do that. And the one we currently have is not, it, it's, we have tracks on it. Yep. But it's one that has wheels that we've added tracks to, which is not quite as functional as one that is designed for tracks. So this might be just me overthinking this, but do the people that operate this receive special training, and is there any kind of insurance concerns? No. Special training, yep. There are certain people that can operate it, only certain people. Okay. Uh, not everybody in maintenance will operate it. And then there's training. There's a two-year warranty, and the thing that we have to do, right, the first couple of years is just make sure we'll have the oil change and all that scheduled. So if we do that, then the warranty stays in place with that. But there are only several people at the that will be able to use it. Yes. I think it, I think it's you know makes sense in the long run because if we're going to rent something, 15, 20 days a month, you know, you're, you're basically you're we're probably spending more renting it than it would be to make a payment on it. Yep. You know, if we're financing it, so. Well, it's not only that, but we're also, you know, as a district, picking up more things along with the construction mm -hmm. projects yep. that we have that we're yep. completing at a more reasonable cost, and we need the equipment yep. to be able to do that. Correct. Yep. Good point. Yeah, we're, we're not a small district that can farm everything. You know, we've got people who can take care of it here. So. Any other questions, comments? All right. Can I have a motion to approve the purchase order to Boyd Cat for a Caterpillar compact track loader in the amount of $68,300? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cole. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Next up is 6I, which is to approve the copy paper purchase. This is our second truck load. Uh, we approved the first truck load on May the 12th, so I think we got one more after this sometime or another, don't we? Uh, uh, yeah, typically what we do, just so everybody understands why we're spreading this out, typically what we do is we buy either two or three um, truckloads of paper, sometimes two and a half, but we get a better deal for buying the whole truckload. So most of the time we'll buy three one year, maybe two the next, so we've got some, some left over. But anyway... Um, if you don't know, there was a shortage of copy paper because the uh, one of the copy mills, uh, copy one of the paper mills, um, I think had a fire or a strike or or some issue. They could, we, were, we did not have paper available. So uh, the time we would typically order three truckloads, we couldn't get three truckloads, uh, and so we ordered one truckload, and now we had an opportunity to get a second truckload because paper is now available. So we've done a second, and then. Um, uh, a little later, we will look to buy a third because with the supply being improved now because the factories are back online, uh, hopefully we will get a, uh, a price that perhaps is a little better than the, uh, than the first. But um, that's where we are. So we need, a, need another load of paper. Any questions, comments? Can I have a motion to approve the purchase of one truckload of white copy paper, 840 cases, for $36,372 with Action Business Suppliers? So moved. Motion by Ms. Cobb. I'll second. Second by Ms. Brock. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up is 6J, which is to approve the Amatrol PO. Yeah, Amatrol is a, um, is a company that produces... Um, a lot of things, but the particular uh, item we're looking at here is training aids, training aids for our industrial maintenance program. Um, and this is pretty much the industry standard for uh, industrial maintenance products uh, or industrial maintenance training products. Uh, so when you think of all of the things within, a, within an industrial facility that students need to learn how to fix, um, Amatrol puts it together in small stations, and they have several small little uh, training stations 
where students learn to fix certain types of pumps and certain types of um, um, uh, electrical items and certain types of uh, uh, hydraulic pieces. Uh, there's a lot of hydraulic uh, systems within this. So this is a complete piece that will outfit the entire um, industrial maintenance lab with these with these training modules. So, uh, and this is what is recommended. Uh, it, we buy it off the bid list because it's what's recommended by the state for those programs. So, this is some really neat equipment. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my husband works in this stuff. Are there warranties that come with this? Uh, there are. Um, okay. yeah. I just know this stuff tears up a lot. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, hopefully these kids will be able to fix it. Too, right? <laughs> yeah, hopefully they'll be trying to fix it. <laughs> So it goes across multiple disciplines within... Uh, well, it's, it is academy. multiple disciplines, but the industrial maintenance program is what it's, this is designed for because in, in, industrial, in the industrial maintenance program, you have to be able to do electricity, you have to do plumbing, you have to be able to work hydraulics, you have to do, be able to do some machining. So uh, it cuts across a lot of different places or a lot of different uh, um, trades, trades and so forth within the, within the skills, so within the training pieces. So uh, It's yeah. pretty sophisticated. It is, yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, comments? If not, can I have a motion to approve the Amatrol purchase order for Amatrol Learning Systems for the Ignite Academy in the amount of $177,734? So moved. Motion by Ms. Cobb. Second. Second <laughs> by Ms. Brock. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh, 6K is to award the bid for the MKA cooling tower. I think we had some discussion on this a couple months ago. Uh, yes, a few months ago we did the BG1, and what we went ahead and did uh, is we uh, we approved the purchase of the actual cooling tower, uh, so we could get that on order because we knew that it would be delayed. And then uh, we did our uh, bid for the install and the roof repair uh, as a separate bid. Uh, I think our initial BG1 was 250000 I believe, was the initial BG1. Uh, the cooling tower itself came in at uh, 57000 I think. So, um, so we did that. We actually did that BG1 about a year ago. So, um, so we were within about $20,000 on, uh, on our BG1 um, a year ago. So that was, we feel pretty good about that. Uh, but this is for the install of that cooling tower, and then they will... They remove the old. They remove the old cooling tower that sits on the roof. Uh, they have to peel it back. There is um, there's some structural issues there, where that uh, unit is sitting. So they have to replace some steel, put the roof back, and then do uh, all of the piping and the fitting of the uh, the new cooling tower itself. So uh, we had two bids, uh, two bids on it. Uh, one was this. Uh, we're recommending a TP Mechanical on this for 219. 365. The other bid was, Tony, do you recall 256 or something like that? 251.900 from LAGCO. 251.900 from LAGCO. So when is all this going to take place? All right. Um, we had to wait and see when the ship date was. That's one of the reasons we delayed the, the bid, uh, because we, did, we couldn't put a bid out until we knew approximately when it was going to come in. Uh, we were hoping that we'd be able to get it knocked out before school, because really this is about... Um, <coughs> What do we give them? 40 days start to finish? Is that? Yes, sir. Okay, so 40 days start to finish. But we've asked them to, uh, we've given them actually a start date of October. We were hoping to be able to give them a start date around, you know, first, second week of July. That way it would be in the start of school. But right now, too much of a risk. Um, and it, you know, one, one part gets delayed. We could probably get it and get it done. Um, but one part gets one of these additional parts that they have to get one piece of steel gets delayed and we're spending the first three or four weeks the hottest time of the year without without air so uh, we have patched the cooling tower um, and um, uh, got it in shape to where it should be able to last through this cooling season and uh, we have them this contract that uh, the awarding of the bid this contract the first date is October 22nd. Is that correct? Yes, sir. October 22nd. So they have 40 days from October 22nd to complete this work. Um, so, and we've asked them, Tony, you want to address this? And that can be, if we're still got 90 degree days for some reason in October 22nd, we can ask them, hey, don't yeah. shut the cooling sure. down. Yeah, get us another because week. Because we'll have heating. 
Yeah. So they can bypass the air conditioning and still have heating. So mm -hmm. they can work all well, not work all but yeah. Yeah. it's not a problem during the cooling, or I'm sorry, the heating months. It's the cooling months. But we are doing some roof replacement, so we don't want to get too far into winter with the roof mm -hmm. replacement. Mm -hmm. And then we want to make sure that we, if we tear it down, that we are able to have it back when cooling season uh, comes back in the spring. So, uh, so a lot of pieces there. Yeah, I think we have figured out what one piece can do to mm -hmm. a timetable. You. Me when I did. 
I was coming up at the Sixth Sergeant Rachel, which I probably did, Sixth Sergeant Rachel, but I went to my daughter's classroom and said, well, Mr. T, what should we do? And nothing. All right. He called me, and he read a little to me on the phone, and I said it to him. Y'all have a lot of students that have committed suicide at Nancy Central because of the bullying situation. And there's a lot of parents that are scared to come and tell y'all that these kids are losing their life because of the bullying situation, which y'all talk, which I do not tolerate. Which apparently it goes unnoticed. And then a parent has to catch her son or daughter in the bathroom daily because of now speaking from experience, I know. A couple of my friends, which I'm not going to mention, they have lost children within the last couple of months. My daughter attempted suicide. But I got her out. Um, I put her in counseling. Everybody that central knows her and the charge of But she has lost the wheel. She has lost the life. I want to know. With everything else that y'all doing in all the schools that y'all build, I want to know what y'all really want to do because I don't want to be another parent like these kids in Texas or in any other place where this man just walks into the school and he shoots a bunch of kids because nobody gives a kid me to I just want to know what y'all plan to do. I think that's a... A conversation we have, and we're still trying to figure out what the answers are, because no one knows what the answers are to mental health. And you know, obviously, we'll we'll follow up Dr. Gillum and about what's going on with your daughter. But I know us as a board, we're always having conversations about mental health and what can we do, because we know it's an issue, we know it's a problem, but it's trying to find what the solution is to catch everyone. In, you have counselors. Well, you have individuals like the Lexington school, for instance. They have a, like a counseling meeting where they sit down with the teens that are troubled and just find in somebody who had a heart and let them sit there and listen to them. Not a proper organization. You have your office, you have your family session, you have all these different things that y'all do with the school. Nobody's actually saying well. I think we should work on this before one of these kids get their mind. I have to become a friend's teacher. I don't want it to happen because I'm a school teacher. I never had a problem. Matter of fact, I'm a school district. I've never seen it. But to see it now and the way that that does still exist, it's on social media. Instagram. Mm -hmm. It shows you where kids are bullying and other kids. Look, they actually kill themselves because of other kids can see them. Yeah. There is no excuse for saying we're trying to figure out what we're going to do or what happens if another child loses their life. Then we can come up with ideas where we can say, well, we didn't know what we were going to do with this situation. We didn't know how to handle this situation. So we Turn a blind eye to it and to another kid's kid. Well, I can tell you, we're not turning a blind eye to it. We're working, you know, I think we've had discussions before on trying to find mental health counselors. It's not as easy as what you think. They're, they're very far and few in between. And to cover the amount of schools that we have, it's a, it's a hard thing to do. And so we are working with that. We, we've had discussions before about getting mental health counselors and trying to expand this program. And because all of us up here are affected by it also, uh, there's, you know, we all, all of us know people who need help. So it's really, our hardest part is trying to find the people to do the work, that know how to do the work. Mm -hmm. that's, that's our biggest obstacle. It's not, that we not want to, mm -hmm. we can't, we're not trying to. The hardest part is finding the mental health professionals that will come into a school and help us and work with us every day on a schedule. 
So I promise you, we are working and we are having discussions, but the biggest problem is finding the actual mental health professionals that are trained and certified to help our kids and help them work through their issues. Because it's not something that, you know, I can just go sit down with a group of kids because I don't know how to help them. I just know what I would do, you know, and our biggest issue is trying to find a mental health professional that will come into the schools and work. And I think you said you'd talk to Mr. Neely, and uh, I think, does he, you have her uh, contact information? Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I'll, I'll reach back out to you, and we'll have a I'll follow up on this conversation, because there's a lot of details here and things that we need to we need to talk about. So I'll reach out to you, okay? And we appreciate you, uh, we appreciate certainly you sharing, okay? I love my That's great. I want my daughters to love it. I don't want my daughters to be scared. I want my daughters to enjoy the fact that they can go to high school and not have nothing to worry about. I promise you, we all share the exact same feelings for every kid in Madison County, period. And that's our goal, I mean, is to you know, educate these kids and, and, you know, equip them to go out into the world. And so we're all 100% in agreement with your feelings towards your daughter. And we are working and we are trying. I can promise you that. But thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the situation uh, is about to come up in August. My daughter is scared to go back to school. I just want to know how we and I assure you, we'll talk about that. So we're going to finish your agenda right here, real quick, and then I'll then I will I will speak with you. Okay. Okay. I wish you'd let us know that before we could yeah. we could talk beforehand. But thank you, thank you. All right. So can I have a motion to award the bid for the cooling tower at Madison Kindergarten Academy to TP Mechanical in the amount of two hundred nineteen thousand three hundred sixty-five dollars? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cole. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, item number seven is to appoint the secretary to the board, which I think we're going to nominate Dr. Gillum to be our secretary for the board. Yep. We have to uh, have to do this every four years. So. Yep. Anybody have any questions, comments? If not, can I have a motion to appoint Superintendent David Gillum as secretary to the board? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cole. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Next up is number eight, which is our superintendent's report. Dr. Gillum. All right. Well, thank you. Yes, uh, you know, we're in July. July is uh, um, uh, obviously the month we recognize Independence Day, and I hope um, Everyone had a great chance to spend that with some family and friends, but I also want to express how thankful that I am for this country that we live in and the freedoms that we enjoy, uh, and the uh, and I hope that uh, that we value uh, and support public education in this country. The fact that we do is uh, is tremendous, and I hope we never take that for granted. Uh, I do appreciate Dr. Hunter and the report that she gave concerning uh, our summer learning that's been going on. Uh, I guess that really does show you that our schools don't shut down in the um, in the summertime. That we do have a lot of things going on. Uh, in addition to the to the summer school, you know, with food service, uh, those kids are getting uh, fed meals while they're at school, and then we do our summer feeding. Um, and then, as well, our schools kick back up tomorrow. I think starts the first official day of of uh, our fall sports season, but. You know, if you've been by our schools, you see lots of stuff going on throughout the summer uh, and other things beyond sports. Our bands, our uh, uh, co-curricular vocational student organizations like FFA and some of those others. Um, our maintenance staff, you heard Mr. Reister there describe some of the things that they've got going on. You know, right now we're mulching playgrounds, we're painting, we're doing all of our maintenance. Technology department, real busy. Um, uh, the achievement team uh, is getting together, working with principals and making plans for the coming year. Finance department, you all heard Mr. Woods say several times about how much they've got going on. That's one of the busiest times for them, getting ready for their audits and, and uh, wrapping up the budget year and getting the budget prepared for next year and then doing nine payrolls, I think, over uh, just a few weeks' uh, time period. So um, lots and lots of stuff going on. Our, our bus drivers come in. They do their summer trainings new driver trainings, and uh, preschool staff doing uh, screenings. So uh, plenty of things going on throughout our district. Uh, we just appreciate those uh, that work that all of those people do. Um, 
and uh, as I said, you know, for, for a lot of these positions in our district, there really isn't a downtime. Summer is, uh, in fact, for some of them, summer's the busiest time of the year. Uh, but I do hope all of our folks get time to uh, relax and take a, take a few days off as, for a vacation and uh, unplug and get ready for this next school year. Some other things that I will mention, um, I did uh, attend the uh, superintendent summit in Frankfurt at the end of June there. Um, and then as well, uh, got a chance to meet with the uh, Dr. Couple, who is the president of BCTC, uh, on, met with him on Tuesday of this week as we were looking at um, some partnerships for expanding dual credit opportunities and, and also enhancing our CTE offerings uh, through our Ignite Academies. And, uh, and Tony, he is also is very excited about getting the opportunity to visit and tour our new Ignite Academy. So uh, he was kind of mad at me because uh, he said well, we didn't invite him to open house, so we haven't had open house yet. So uh, that's on its way. Uh, I also want to say congratulations to a few new folks. Uh, uh, of course, Mr. Reister, I think you, uh, you heard him speak there as our maintenance director. Amy Carmichael, we made reference to our food service director. That's Amy Carmichael, who was the uh, Family Resource Youth Service Center director at, at uh, Kirksville. And then, if you'll recall, our MTSS uh, school counseling coordinator uh, that we uh, did at the last, um, uh, last board meeting, which is to address those uh, mental health and uh, student health concerns. Uh, and that is Angie Wilcox. Um, who was the guidance counselor at Kirksville Elementary. Uh, as well, I will mention uh, we also uh, have Corrine Rougeau, who is now our um, uh, principal of the Bellevue Learning Center. So Mr. Uh, um, um, Winkler retired at Bellevue, and Ms. Rougeau is now leading Bellevue. So I think that's the update that I need to give you. So that's my superintendent report. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is number nine, which is comments from the board. Anyone? Comments? Yep. You know, I think, the, I think the biggest thing that all of us have questions about and concerns is our construction. <laughs> I, I think that's been the biggest topic of the last month is, is our ATC. So um, that's really all I got on that. Uh, number 10 is to enter into an executive session to discuss potential property acquisition or sale. So can I have a motion to enter into executive session to discuss future acquisition or sale of real property for which publicity would likely affect the value per KRS 61.811B? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. I'll second. Second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we're in executive session.
Can I have a motion to come out of executive no. session? So moved. Second. Oh, as a motion by Ms. Cobb. I don't know who was second. Oh, I'll second. All right, Ms. Brock. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, next up is number 12, actions, if any, resulting from executive session. Can I have a motion to grant the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet 15 additional feet for the turning lane that they are proposing to build on 421 for Kingston Elementary? So moved. Motion by Ms. <clears throat> Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cobb. All those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 All right, now can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Motion by Ms. Brock. Second. Second by Ms. Cobb. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Aye.